Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. And today we're going to talk about pigment. Uh, we're going to talk all about how to use pigment on your miniatures, uh, or at least we're going to talk about more of the weathering aspects of pigment. Um, there are actually lots and lots of ways to use raw pigment on your miniatures. Today we're going to specifically focus on uh, sort of weathering and environmental effects with pigment. So uh, let's just get right into it. I've got a little robot guy here I painted and we're going to put some pigment on him in some various places. Machines are usually a great place to do it. But I will say it's a it's a good final step on a lot of your miniatures, um, especially if you have miniatures who are walking through dusty, dirty, grimy places. A little bit of pigment as a finisher, say, on the bottom of their feet can really be a way to set them in the environment they're in. Uh, it's one of my final steps I usually do on most of my miniatures that are walking through a, a non sort of urban or clean environment. Uh, it just it's a very subtle effect, but it will make the miniature feel like part of the world it's allegedly occupying. So the first thing I want to say with pigment uh, is this guy is, you know, more or less painted. Um, he's painted up to the standard I want to take him to at least. There's a couple things I would pick out, but he's good enough for now. And pigment is usually one of the last things you want to apply when you're talking about weathering with it. So just like with... Uh, most weathering techniques, it's going to be a final step. So if I was going to do some freehand numbers on him or something, I would have wanted to do that first. You know, this uh, all these other sort of layers and highlights and colors and anything like that, the final step is going to be the pigment. Okay? And that's because it's the, in terms of the, the universe of the model, it would be the top layer, right? It's the dust or dirt cake to his feet. It's the corrosion around like the vents or the ash and whatever that's getting blown out, the dust and dirt that's getting trapped in the filter. Whatever these things are that it happens to be, it's going to be sort of the highest layer of what it is. And so as a result, it's going to be one of the last things we put on the model. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual pigments themselves. There are a lot of different pigments out there. They're all basically fine that I've played around with. Um, my favorites are the uh, Vallejo pigments, uh, I, which I've done a review of before. I quite like them. Um, but also I love the Secret Weapon pigments. The Secret Weapon line has a, a slightly larger range of colors with some really interesting tones. So, for example, this is Clay Brown and Dark Earth. Um, and you can see what those look like right there. Uh, Secret Weapon really has a, a great handle on weathering. It's one of the things that Justin McCoy... Uh, their, their owner, founder, whatever, is, is really one of the best in the world at. And so, you know, but anything like this will do. There's AK Interactive makes pigments. A bunch of people make them. I, I don't have any particular horse in the race or brand. Pick one and use one you like or whatever's available in your area. Uh, the other thing we're going to use is just an older brush. So you can see how this is all like frayed out and dead. Like this is a dead brush. This is one of my sort of junk brushes. You don't really want to use one of your nice brushes with raw pigment. The other thing that I like to do, or we want to keep in mind, and I want to make sure this isn't going to blow my camera up, because if not, I'll just put up with it. But uh, I'll probably... Get, there you go. It's fine. I like to put it on something uh, when I'm putting applying pigment, because it's going to go everywhere. And it helps to not make a mess of your workspace if you've got like a paper towel or something under it. Now, when it comes to the application of pigment, there are really sort of two main ways to do it that I'm going to talk about. There are, again, more than I'm going to cover, but these are sort of the two main ways you can apply pigment. The first way you can do it is straight. You're literally just dusting with the pigment, okay? And after that, you can choose to either fix it or not, depending on how strong you want the effect. Fixing it simply means that after you've got the pigment on the model where you want it, you then apply either something like glaze medium or some alcohol. This is a 90% uh, alcohol mix that I keep around, 90% isopropyl alcohol. Either of those will activate the pigment and cause it to set in place. Um, it will also change the color, which we'll see in effect. Uh, so you want to think about whether or not you need to fix it. Now, 
whether or not you're fixing your pigment in my mind is really a question of what what is the, where is this miniature going if it's a competition mini that's going to go on a display plinth and never move or really get touched again except to like go to the competition and then come home and be in your in your display cabinet or something you probably don't need to fix it to be completely honest um it's it's going to be fine now, if it's going to be a model that's touched or handled with any kind of regularity, like a gaming piece, well, then we probably need to fix it to some degree. Um, you can also fix it with a final coat of varnish, uh, So, it, but you have to be very careful about how you um, spray that over because if you blow directly on the pigment with a lot of air, you will blow the, some of the pigment off. So pretty obvious. But a good coat of testers, dull coat or something, if applied very carefully and from a distance, maybe two coats, will also fix pigment in place and kind of hold it. The second way you can apply pigment is to actually use those previous things I mentioned, alcohol or glaze medium, and mix them directly with the pigment before you apply it on the model. There you get something that's a little different. It's more like super heavy pigmented paint. Uh, so let's take our little guy here. And normally I'd put him on something, but since we're gonna be working around his feet and stuff like that, we're gonna keep him we're gonna keep him exposed today. So what we want to do is we want to get these feet grimy. Now I keep a palette uh, at my paint station that is just my pigment palette. So you can see I have like some white, uh, some green gray, reds, browns, blacks, all this. I just it's here. I do that so I don't have to like pop the bottle and get new pigment every time I want to do something with it. Um, so it makes it very easy to use. So what we're going to do here first is we're going to get some of this brown black pigment over here and we're going to go ahead and dirty up his feet. Okay. So right along here. So to do that, I just literally get some of this pigment onto my brush and I'm just moving it around in the dust. You can, as you can see here, you can kind of mix them together. And then what I want to do is just kind of stab it in there. Now, when you're just using the dry pigment, you can use a lot of it and it doesn't really have a massive effect. You can see, I'm not really moving the color a great deal there, All right? Now this can vary. So the brown black just sort of was a very minimal effect because this is already a very brown green. And sometimes that's what you want. If you're just trying to place the model into the world, you don't want to go over the top. That's another thing with pigment is the nice part about it is if you're not mixing the medium with it directly, if I'm just dusting like this, I can come back and pull this off, All right? I can get a big heavy brush like this over here, just a big heavy dry brush, and I can pull some of that back off pretty easy, okay? So you can really control how much pigment goes on here when you're working with just sort of dry pigment. Uh, and a very subtle effect like that, I don't even know if that really shows, but just a little bit, like if you look at the difference between the two feet there, you can see the dirt and grime there, whereas not here. However, if you go with a stronger color or a heavier, more intense pigment, it's going to show up more. So for example, if I get into my black pigment over here, and I put some of that on, you can see how it's going to show. But again, I can wipe it down. It will tend to like, much like a wash, it will tend to actually kind of collect in the resources or in the recesses, sorry, stuff like that, which can be good because that's where dust would settle. It gets trapped, right? So just slight applications like that, okay? If you go with something that's real bright, like let's take some of this red pigment. I don't know if I'm slightly off camera, but I'm just grabbing this very red sort of Martian oxidized pigment here. So if I wanted to show this the guy walking on Mars, right? If he was, if I, the base I was going to do was maybe red or something. And so I wanted to bring that up. That will really show up. So the color of your pigment versus the model you're applying it to makes a big difference um, into how strong of an effect you get. So I would tell you that when you're doing this, make sure you think in terms of like exactly how crazy are you trying to get with this because you don't want it to you don't want him to look like he stepped in a puddle of red right which is this is like such a strong effect i would probably not use a red that strong 
um, on most miniatures. So I can kind of get in there and just brush it off, get it back down, knock it back down. But the other key is, the nice part about pigment is, until you apply it and it's set, the other thing I can do is I can come in with other pigment and go over top. So you saw there how I had the red. I can come back in with a brown and desaturate that back out. And now it's, again, much less red. So we look and see kind of the, the color there as it fades up versus just what's on the other side. Okay. And really, that's all there is to getting the simple dry pigment application. You don't have to be too afraid with it. You can just, it's going to, for the most part, have a very subtle effect. It's not going to move the color a lot. You don't have to work directly from the palette. Here I was, but let's say I liked this clay brown. I can also just pop my clay brown here, which is an interesting. It's like a little pinky clay color. I quite like it. Secret Weapon, like I said, makes great colors of pigments. They even have some some really like sort of sci-fi ones that are like uh, green and blue and stuff, which are really cool for various sorts of effects. But I could just go straight into here. And I can just kind of push that clay around. And there I get a more dry effect. But really, that's all there is to it. It's just, and you can see how you want to kind of let it collect in the resources like on top of this thing here, because when dust got s settled in this robot, that's where it would settle, right? It's pretty much that easy. Um, we'll do it again here over on the other foot. You can apply multiple layers of this pigment, just like paint, to get mixed sort of colors effect to show he's been walking in different environments. So I could start out with this very yellow uh, dirt earth color. Right, and kind of push that around in some places to get a nice subtle change. But then I could also take some black or some dark brown and I could kind of push that along the very bottom to sort of darken up the lower parts, right? And then I could sort of finish. I just went off on to knock it out. I just wiped my brush across the paper towel with this brighter clay color up higher if I wanted to show kind of a lighter effect and that getting trapped in there. So think of, you can think of it just like paint and you can create layers of this to create some subtle, interesting effects of the different types of dust and environment this guy's been walking through. If you're doing it on things like feet, you want to make sure you go all the way around, right? You want to get the whole foot with the same thing. Don't just do the outside, do the whole foot, that kind of thing. Again, this is a pretty subtle effect, depending on what you put it on. Now, again, if you, if this person had, if this, if this was like a, a human, humanoid character who had, let's say, black leather boots on, it would be real subtle. But if I did, went to my white pigment, it would stand out like shock. So think about how strong of a contrast the, the pigment you're applying is, and that'll basically tell you how strong the, the, uh, the pigment's going to stand out if applied as a dry pigment, okay? Uh, it's also great for things like vents. Now with vents, like these back on the back side of his arms, uh, you can kind of capture the burn. This can be a good thing at the end of guns, like especially guns that are supposed to be getting real hot. Um, can be a great way to sort of capture the burn on the end of a gun because that is what's happening on the end of a gun there is, is carbonization. And that looks very much like a pigment. So for this, I've got some dark earth here from Secret Weapon, and we're going to focus on our black. Now, for this side, I'm going to go ahead and use the fixer uh, as part of it. With these feet on this robot, I probably wouldn't do much in the way of applying a fixer because I'm not going to touch the model by the feet, and if that's all I was doing... Eh, I'm good enough with it. Will some of it a little bit fall off after over time? Sure. But that's okay. However, with this back here, this is up on the model itself, and I want a stronger effect. Okay, I want this to look uh, like there's just a deep char in the center of this thing. Okay. So what I do is on my palette here, On my palette over here, I'm going to take a little of my 90% plus mix of isopropyl alcohol. 
Just put a few drops of that in there. This stuff will evaporate fast. I'm going to go into it first. And then I'm just going to come over to my pigment and just grab some of my pigment. And then right in the center of these things. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of drag it around. Just like the paint. Now, notice how screwed up your brush gets instantaneously. That is why you do not want to use a nice brush for this. Okay? Now I can keep going back into the pigment. And I can keep applying more and more of it, depending on how dirty of an effect I want. I'll show you down here on this leg where it'll really stand out. The brush still has some of the alcohol in it. So if I wanted some sort of grime right in here, oop, need a little more alcohol. You can see how that really, really stands out. Now, at the same time, I could also then wipe my brush real quick and just kind of smooth that out. To almost feather the effect, just like I would paint. And now what I get is that nice oil stain. At the same time, I can then take the brown pigment, the dark earth, if I want a little dirt effect, Oh, too much. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. And I can push that in there. And if you do too much like I just did, because you get impatient, guess what? I didn't put any strong fixer on that one. There we go. can pull it right back out. Easy peasy. No mistakes. Just happy little accidents. And now I get a nice brown red effect. Same thing I can do back here. Back on these vents. I want a little touch of brown in there. You can just come in. Just drop some of that pigment right on there to show the dirt that's been captured in there. Wipe off my brush. And then what I can do if I want to fix it afterward, make sure this is all locked in. However I want this to look. Maybe I want a little red in there too. We can put a little red in there. Maybe there's a little bit of Martian dust trapped in there as well that looks super red <laughs> on camera it's not quite that red in reality oh well we can knock that back a little let's just kind of push that together let's grab a little more of the black too much it's okay when you're working with pigment you got to kind of find the happy medium but the nice part is you can just kind of go back and forth There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. So now if we've got the vents looking how we want, a little bit of browns, a little bit of orange, whatever, it's got some char. Now we can take our alcohol mix and we can just touch it very lightly to the area. I'm not brushing, I am touching and letting it run off the brush. So I have a lot of the alcohol mix and you'll see how I just go, a doop, a doop. Very light touches. If you brush, you will pull it off. Okay, we can do the same down here. Do a little touch. You see how it capillaries along. Okay. Now, the reason I like to actually use the alcohol mix, or I like alcohol as instead of uh, the glazed medium or whatever, and again, either one is fine. Use what you like. The reason I like the alcohol is because it dries, like, super fast um, because it is alcohol, and alcohol evaporates, especially, uh, you know, something like 90-plus percent isopropyl alcohol. It's going to evaporate in a matter of seconds. And then your pigment is set. Now, I would still varnish this to hold it in place, but you can see how we've got these nice, grimy, gritty vents now on the back of there, okay? And they have real texture to them. 
which is the other advantage to pigment, is that your paint is smooth and you can achieve a lot with the color, but with the with pigments, you can actually achieve a real presence of the thing. So like if I really want to get some dirt on this guy, like I want his feet to be soaked. Well, then I can go here into my alcohol. And I can get some real mud on here, right? I can really get that pigment and just really, really build it up. So if you've ever got some super heavy weathering where, you know, somebody's been walking through like, you know, thick, thick mud, or that's what you want to capture. Now, the other nice part about how you can apply it with the fixer, like you can see how heavy the actual texture that that created. Okay. The other nice part about this is as the alcohol dries, you can go back into your dry pigment and apply some across the top. In general, the colors of pigment will be darker with the fixer applied than without. What that means is that you can get the effect of wet capillary traveling up the miniature. Okay? So I can get my alcohol, by the way, in my palette evaporated in the amount of time we've been talking. That's how long it takes to evaporate out of your palette. But what that means is you can take some of that and I can touch in there. Now, it will dry roughly the same color. Roughly. Okay? It's this is way more pronounced the distinction when it's wet. It is not going to stay this dark brown. So when you're applying pigment with the fixer attached, you have to have a good idea of what it looks like. But it will come out a slightly different shade than the pigment on its own. And that's because of the way the, the sort of pigment is going to settle amongst the, the fixer. Like the way those little molecules are working together. So I actually like to go back into my dry pigment when I'm doing something heavy like this. And just kind of almost blend along the edge there. You can probably see from this that this can also be a fun way to do uh, some very heavy like rust and weathering effects if you have the right pigment colors for that. But you can see how now this guy is, you know, has walked through a much deeper, darker mud. Like we have moved the color of this very strongly. We could put some black on on top. Like we have, we have moved this around, okay? Compared to our original foot, which there was our other side. So... You can go overboard with this too fast. It's real easy. And if you're going to do something that heavy, then you want to be bringing it up into the model and fading it out. Like nothing would get that heavy without having some other way and traveling some distance up the miniature. What I mean is you want to slowly decrease the pigment amount on the miniature as it travels up. Okay? So... When you're thinking about applying this, lighter is better. And if, but if you're going to go heavy, make sure it travels the appropriate distance up. Okay. Because this guy would be walking, any mud that got this thick, he'd be walking through it. He'd be splashing around. It'd be kicking up, right? Every time he took his foot up, he'd kick some of the mud up into the, these upper areas and so on and so forth. And then what you can do is you can get a nice smooth transition up the side of the miniature. So, whether you're going a little more light, and it's just something there to be a little, you know, a little bit of an accent, perhaps, you know, a little, little dirt or pigment to show that he's in the environment, something very soft, like that. Or whether you're going very heavy, the techniques are much the same, okay? You just want to make sure that it fades into the miniature. Pigment's there to create a subtle effect not to totally recolor your miniature. If you're going to use the fixer with it, um, you can either apply the pigment first and then just drop the, the fixer on. Again, this is now set in here, but the key is uh, I don't want to, I don't want to actually brush the alcohol in. Whenever I fix it, I want to just get a nice brush and just go drip, 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 
light touches, right? That way I'm not moving any other pigment around. I'm just relying on the capillary action of wherever it is that I'm touching it to hold it in place. As far as fixtures go, you can use, like I said, some glaze medium, thinner medium, Lamia medium, 90% uh, isopropyl alcohol. All that kind of stuff will work fine um, and will hold it in place. They also make pigment fixer specifically. Um, I, it's, I, I'll be honest, I've never used specific pigment fixer. I've always just used alcohol or glaze medium and been very happy with the results. Um, but there you go. That's how you can use your pigments to get a nice uh, weathered effect and sit the miniature in the world that they occupy uh, or to do some neat, you know, heavy weathering and charring on things like gun barrels, exhaust vents, exhaust ports, stuff like that. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed. You can see why I said I keep the, uh, the paper towel under me because that would all be in my painting area and pigment can be a bit of a pain to clean up. So an extra paper towel will do you well, but there you go. That's working with pigments uh, for weathering and uh, environmental effects. I certainly hope you enjoyed that. If you found it useful, give it a like. That's always appreciated. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Uh, share this with somebody else if you know they're thinking about they're thinking about doing some pigments or maybe they've got some big stompy robots walking across Mars. Sharing is always the nicest thing you can do. And uh, if there's a hobby cheating you want to see in the future, uh, feel free to comment down below. Always love to take uh, viewer suggestions. But as always, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.